What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now before we get into today's first entitled parent story, first of all, I saw this and I just had to show you it. It's insane. How about this for a news article headline? Florida man arrested for wrestling a fake alligator at a shopping mall and you can see if you're watching on youtube uh, uh, there's an image here and what's amazing is that there's also an accompanying video of this which we're gonna get into but first of all a florida team was arrested for wrestling and damaging a fake alligator at a mall mid days after he was arrested for attempting a wrestling move on his school principal i mean if this picture didn't say enough i think that is giving us the context that we need <laughs> Police didn't have to search hard to track him down since he shared an Instagram video of himself damaging the display alligator at the full shopping center in Miami. That video, as I said, we're going to watch in just a second. The video, which was later released by police, shows him taking off his shirt, jumping over a fence and tackling the fake alligator in a shallow pond. The destruction of the display animal, valued at 3,690 US dollars, took place back on March 30th. And without further ado, I'm delighted to say that here is that video. And here we go. Here is the absolute hoodlum himself. Um, top off, you know, doing what any good man does and proceeding to do this. So for those of you that are listening on podcast platforms, this guy, this random guy, has, has jumped into a pond with a fake alligator, RKO'd it, now pinning it to the ground wrestling style and... That's it. Shock. He was arrested. And there we go. So there we go. A fun little one. Probably the craziest entitled person I've ever come across. And uh, without further ado, let's get into some more normal entitled people stories. Friends infantilizing incestuous mother. Hey Reddit fam. This has nothing to do with me personally. A close friend of mine, who we'll call Jake, asked me to write his story here as he's pretty bad with words and doesn't know how to put his feelings down. He has autism, which wasn't diagnosed until he was already an adult and moved out of his mother's place and went no contact. His mother, who I'll call Wacky Wanda, has always treated Jake like a baby, from the time he was born up until he went no contact with her. He tells me that as far back as he can remember, she would make him wear bibs at the dinner table and always hand feed him. She claimed it was because he was a special child that needed the extra help. His father, Frank, would always chastise Wanda for this, saying that he would never grow up if she kept babying him. She'd get annoyed though and tell him that he was being ridiculous and that she loved her baby boy so much. Way too much, if you ask me. Jay began to believe that he was developmentally challenged because of her. Wanda would show up at his school and throw a fit when the teachers wouldn't pull Jake out of class to see her. He began to deal with bullying from other kids who would call him a mama's boy and tease him about wanting his mummy all of the time. As Jake got older, he started fighting back against the bullying. Eventually, he started yelling at his mum. Whenever she would show up at school, he'd tell her to go home and leave him alone. This never went down well, and he tells me that she would sit alone in her room and pout, crying about how he'd hurt her feelings. He'd always apologize and she would coo at him and pinch his cheeks and say that she couldn't stay mad at him because he was her baby boy and he was all she had in life, completely forgetting that she had a husband, by the way. So freaking manipulative. Once Jake was a teenager, Jake started acting out and becoming more independent from his mum. I don't know if everyone knows this, but not all autistic people are built the same. Jake is a very good looking guy. He's one of those too pretty to look at type of guys. He started rebelling by getting his dad to let him get tattoos. He started smoking cigarettes and pot and began hanging out with the goth and morbid crowd in high school. He listened to heavy metal music, wearing a leather jacket, eyeliner, and black nail polish. His black hair was always cropped short and he smoothed it back with gel. And from the pictures I saw, wowee, even I said, if I'd seen that walking by me, I'd be turning my head to check him out. That gave him an ego boost. Not to mention, he's very good looking even without the makeup. Now, Wacky Wanda hated Jake's style and said it made him look like a clown and that his beautiful skin was too precious to destroy with tattoos and makeup. She threw his clothes away more than once, replacing them with clothes that she approved of. Frank would always take him to the mall so he could buy new ones and Jake took pleasure out of throwing out the clothes that Wacky Wanda gave him. She would still make them eat dinner at the table every night. She was one of those women that was very traditional about family dinner. They always sat down and she put a bib on Jake and hand fed him his meal until he was finished. She would even spit on a napkin and wipe his face if he got anything on it. Jake noticed that whenever she did this, she would side eye Frank with a smirk, like she wanted him to be jealous or something. Weird. The last time they ate together as a family, as soon as Jake sat down, she pulled out the bib. 
he tried to ask her not to do this as he was 16 and fully capable of feeding himself she chastised him and told him to do as he was told the bibs were too small and wouldn't even fit around his neck he tried to tell her this but she would just sit it on his chest then start hand feeding him by making plain noises jake tore the bib off and told her enough was enough he was 16 years old and he didn't need to be fed like a baby wacky wonder got upset and started whining but frank suddenly blew up and told her to stop with this because this was getting too creepy even for him to tolerate he tried to support her in the dread that her son was getting older and no longer needed her but this was too much to take jake went to his room and didn't come out for the rest of the night wacky wonder pounded and cried for more than a day in hopes of making jake apologize for refusing her but he refused she realized she was losing the battle with keeping her son a baby forever so time to amp up the crazy jake came home from school the next day and found his mum in the kitchen dressed up in all black black eyeliner and lipstick and she even dyed her hair black she had spiked bracelets and a choker she looked ridiculous how i wish i could have seen a picture of this because it sounded hilarious jake was shocked and asked her just what the frick she was doing he noticed the shirt she was wearing was cut way too low and he could see way more cleavage than he was comfortable with she bounded over to him and asked him if he liked it he was too shocked to respond with what he wanted to say and said sure he tells me that she would push out her breast towards him in an effort to make him look what is going on for months after that that was all his mum, by the way guys remember that would dress like she would openly brag to her friends that jake copied her style and she was so proud of him she used to wear turtlenecks and mum jeans with slip on shoes she was the furthest thing from a goth or a punk that you could imagine one night jake was asleep she climbed into bed with him and tried to cuddle with him he woke up and felt someone touching him inappropriately he turned around and saw wacky wonder he freaked out and told her to get the frick out of his room she pouted and cried until jake went to leave he noticed then that his door was locked and he had to unlock it to get out he had to lock himself in the bathroom and she sat outside the door begging him to come and sleep with her jake shouted at her that she was touching him inappropriately and that it wasn't okay and it was weird that she did this with the door locked she screamed that that was how mummies show their love until frank came out of their room to yell at her for the way she was acting and that it was creepy for a mother to want to cuddle her 16 year old son with the door locked she screamed that he didn't understand the bond that she and jake had and that he was jealous jake screamed that they had no bond wacky wonder cried and frank shouted at her to move away from the door or he'd do something he might regret later he took jake and they went to sleep at a motel for the night jake told his dad everything that happened frank finally had enough he couldn't stand the weird and creepy behavior from wacky wonder anymore he filed for divorce and got custody of jake and jake's mum was given visitation rights wacky wonder was mandated to attend parenting classes and therapy and she actually went under the threat of losing any and all rights to her son of course but she staunchly refused to believe she'd ever done anything wrong jake dreaded visitation but as he was still a minor he had no choice in the matter he'd go and make sure to lock his door to prevent her from coming in she did give him space when he was at her house for a while when jake was 17 his dad paid for him to enroll in driver's ed and got him a car this went over like a fart in a church because wacky wonder was annoyed when jake pulled up to our house in a brand spanking new car she lost it and called out frank to scream at him about how she was endangering her baby boy he hung up on her things got worse once jake started seeing a girl at school she was a pretty blonde girl that dressed in similar fashion to jake when wacky wonder found out she went insane jake was in his room sleeping and his mum picked the lock it was one of those push-in locks that a bobby pin can easily pick what jake told me next made my heart drop she undressed herself and climbed into bed with him and began saying him oh my wow i mean i know it said incestuous in the title but gee what the hell he woke up and freaked out he ran away from the house and drove back to his dad's in tears and they called the police wacky wonder got arrested and imprisoned for 11 years jake became severely depressed and tried to unalive himself more than once his dad put him into therapy and he got better over time but he still struggles with everything his mother had done to him jake was formally then diagnosed with autism and he's on medication that keeps him functional he's one of the bartenders at my club and we're really close friends 
He's best friends with my boyfriend, Kyle. Jake has a girlfriend who is one of the sweetest women I've ever met. Jake and I have a connection because we both have experienced SA from relatives. Oh my goodness. And we both are stronger for having gone through that. Sorry this was so long, but he wanted his story shared with everyone. Oh my word. Okay, guys. Well, you know, I said that um, the first story, uh, the first news article. Sorry, I'm a little bit speechless, if you couldn't tell. I said that the... the, the uh, honest, wow. I said... Once again, that the the news article that I uh, I mentioned and and we saw the video of in the the first part of this this episode was one of the mental one of the most crazy again I actually can't speak one of the craziest things I've ever seen one of the most entitled things I've ever seen I, I now might have to re revoke that statement because of what I've just read does that even count as entitled I, I don't know it's obviously way more serious than that perhaps entitled to feel like your child should always be your baby throughout all of these years and his entire life i don't know there's something going on upstairs i mean mentally with with wacky wonder's brain just some sort of complex that she wants to keep her child as an infant for as long as possible i mean i thought it was bad enough with making your son your 16 year old son wear a bib and then feeding him yourself with you know that plain stuff that you do with a child or i mean not a child let's be honest a baby or the most a toddler, but then it got completely serious. All I can say is that it's very good that you called the police and that she is now in prison, but the damage has been done. That's that's the unfortunate thing. Thankfully, it seems as though Wacky Wonder's son is getting through this with therapy and his amazing friendship group, support group. His dad seems great, Frank seems great, and he's got a great girlfriend, but as I said, the damage has been done, and unfortunately, he's going to have to live with this for the rest of his life. Also, OP, I'm so sorry to hear that you've gone through that as well. Why? What is this? It's actually unbelievable that this sort of stuff exists in the world. Oh, man. Without further ado, let's get in to our next Entitled People story. Husband buys coffee machine. Upset that he has to use it. My husband loves coffee. He is the only one in the house who drinks it. Tea and coffee gives me acidity and insomnia, so I don't drink it. Recently, he bought a fancy machine that makes delicious coffee. The only problem is that the coffee trickles down drop by drop. It takes around four to five minutes to fill a tumbler, but can feel like forever if you have nothing else to do but stand there and watch it trickle down. I get the coffee machine going every morning while getting our dear daughter ready for school and making her breakfast. When he comes down after getting ready, my husband's tumbler is ready to go. He leaves, then I take our daughter to school, come back and work from home. So recently, I had an injury that left me bedridden. Luckily, it was my daughter's midterm break, so there was no pressure of getting up early to prepare her meal and take her to school. The only thing left was the coffee. My husband says, no problem, I will make it myself. Day one, two, and three. He makes the coffee and also cleans the machine after every use. But day four, this is too much and it's wasting my time. I reply to him, why don't you switch on the machine tomorrow and get back upstairs to get ready? We live in a duplex, bedroom and dressing room upstairs, kitchen and living room downstairs. Also, he has now stopped cleaning the machine. Day five, he is upset because he had to run up and down twice to tend to his coffee. My next suggestion, move your toiletries to the downstairs washroom for a few days so you can get ready there. I'm not comfortable with that, he replied. Well, now the only solution left is to wake up earlier. Day six, seven, and eight, he wakes up early to make his coffee. He no longer cleans the machine. Come the evening of day eight, I'm very tired. My sleep cycle is whacked. Well, looks like you need to make more coffee, I say. Day nine, he is now side-eyeing me and guilt-tripping me, hoping I would crawl down the stairs to make his coffee. Not happening. So he calls up the maid and tells her to start coming early to make his coffee. She's a part-time helper, and there's no way she'll come this early. By day 10, he's given up. Now he's buying his coffee from outside, and the machine remains unused. I tell you what, that is the sort of man that you want to marry. You've literally married a six-year-old in a man's body. Congratulations. I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. That's obviously tough for you. But if this man cannot make his own coffee every morning and it takes too long, then what else is he not doing? That's my that's my question. I mean, there are a lot more serious things and a lot, a lot of things that take a lot more time than making a coffee every morning. I'll be honest, I do it myself. And here's the evidence on screen right now, a lovely mug to match my lovely top. And it takes about a minute. I clean out my machine, I put in beans and water, and then I press start. Unbelievable scenes, it really is. And, and create incredibly, a machine makes it for me and then i go and get it it really is that easy just laziness 
laziness personified by an entitled man. And now for our final entitled people story of this episode. A stolen dress. My mother sadly died when I was 12. At the moment of our death, our family could have been the stuff of movies. We'd not seen our father in a couple of years and we were well used to a life without any adult inputs. I found my mother dead, called the ambulance and the neighbors all witnessed the spectacle. By afternoon, there were her friends going through her closet. Before illness had stolen it, my mother's true pride was her looks. She was beautiful with stunning red hair. Even after the ravages of her illness, she was still very pretty. She had a green silk dress that was a treasure from the times before everything went bad. In that dress, she could still silence a room. I stood at her bedroom door and I watched these women try on her clothes. One of them grabbed the emerald dress and immediately the women started to fight over the prize. They all wanted it. One woman claimed it, but then another grabbed it out of her hand and immediately locked it in her car. Attention took over the room. I stood and watched, powerless. Remember guys, OP is 12 here. The hyenas who did not get the dress started to bargain their pilfered loot to exchange for the dress, but no deals were made. Word of my mum's death must have gotten to the high school and my older siblings were now walking in the door. My brother was a successful drug dealer who at 17 ruled our house. We all feared him. Even her friends knew he was dangerous. He'd once taken a gun to my mother's head. Seeing him approach the house, the women stopped what they were doing and we all held our breath. But he did not come inside, so they returned to their looting. In the moment, I totally forgot that I was afraid of him. I forgot that I believed he hated us. I forgot the gun. I showed him and my older sister the dress locked in the vulture's car. Mum's stuff was piled on the seats of various friends' cars, but we were all focused on that dress. I went back in to witness the harvest of our home. On the day of the funeral, my brother was a different kid. He stood tall and brave. He made sure to escort each and every one of those vultures up to see our mother laid out in the coffin, adorned in the green dress. And there we go. A slightly more positive story to end this episode. I mean, I don't know. Is that positive? Some of the imagery I had there of women in your dead mother's bedroom stealing her clothes when she's literally just died hours before is pretty unbelievable. And the fact that your brother, despite, yeah, doing a good thing at the end, held a gun to your mother's head. (sighs) Some of the characters we've met in today's episode have been nothing short of sensational. I will say very strange uh now i don't i don't know if you guys know this i don't know if i ever actually tell you this but or if i have told you this before but i never well, i don't ever try to read the stories in full before i narrate them because i want to kind of experience them live at the same time as you lot right that's more fun if i read them and i knew what was going to happen it would take away a bit of the fun for me i obviously check them to see if they're good but i don't read them word for word i just have a little brief overview and let me say i didn't realize that all of these stories were going to end like they did um but hey that is the, I don't know, the, the, what's a good word? <laughs> I can't even think of a word to describe this subreddit and some of the stories on there. Just at times bamboozling. We'll leave it at that. 